Hello, fine people of the interwebs, and thanks for tuning in to my latest video. So in this one, we're going to cover Microsoft Excel's latest upgrade in if function technology, and that is the if s function, sometimes known as IFS and other times known as ifs. Clearly, as is so often the case, I'm a bit perplexed as to the correct pronunciation of this particular function. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go with ifs. But if you prefer another pronunciation, no worries. We can still be friends. Now with that said, let's get into the far more interesting topic of what exactly ifs does. So for starters, the ifs function represents a major, major enhancement of the traditional if function in Excel. Specifically, it's designed to simplify complex conditional logic, the kind of logic that formerly would have required a tangled mess of nested if statements. Unlike with conventional if functions, and at this point I almost feel bad for calling them out so hard, the ifs function allows you to list multiple logical conditions and their corresponding results in a single formula. No nested ifs required. Now, as you might imagine, this makes formulas, especially those that have multiple levels or layers of conditional logic baked in, much more concise and easier to read, which reduces the risk of errors as you're writing out your formulas and also makes your formulas much easier to modify after the fact. Now, I think that's just about enough slides for now. So let's go ahead and jump right into Excel and see how this function works in action. So as our example, let's say we have a list of employees who work in a customer service role alongside their respective CSAT or customer satisfaction scores which theoretically can range anywhere from 0 to 100, although I really hope there's not such a thing as any employee who has a CSAT rating of 0, but more typically tend to be in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So our goal here will be to categorize the performance of these employees as either excellent, good, average, below average, or poor based on these scores. Now, of course, since this video is about the FS function, we'll ultimately be accomplishing this with FS. But before we do that, I want to make it clear that there's really nothing you can do with FS that you can't do with a plain old if function, as long as you're willing to potentially chain together lots of if functions, that is. The point of FS is that it's just way more user-friendly and results in formulas that are much easier to decipher and reason about, especially if they involve multiple layers of conditional logic, like our scenario here. And to illustrate that, before we jump into our ifs-based solution, I want to show you what this would look like were we forced to rely on the plain vanilla if function. My apologies in advance. So because that formula is so gnarly, I'm actually just going to copy and paste it in versus making you watch me type it out for the next 10 minutes. And as you can see in the formula bar, we have not one, not two, not three, but four if functions, one nested inside of another with four closing parentheses at the end to keep track of. Now to be sure, I've written plenty of formulas that look just like this in my time. And trust me, I'm complaining and not bragging about that. And that's exactly why I'm excited to show you a better way. But first, I'll lock this formula down and then fill it down just so we have a basis for comparison. And now let's jump into the far superior alternative. So over here in the adjacent column, I'll start by just typing out the name of our ifs function. And syntax wise, this is really just going to be a series of pairs. 
in which the first item in each pair will be some logical test, and then the second item will be the value we want ifs to return if that logical test is true. So our first test will be to check whether the CSAT score is greater than or equal to 95. So I'll just reference that value in cell B2 and say greater than or equal to 95. And if that is true, I want to return the text string excellent. Next up, if that same value in cell B2 is greater than or equal to 90, we want to return the text string good. And then the pattern just continues on down the line. If B2 is greater than or equal to 85, we want to return average. And then if it's greater than or equal to 80, we want to return below average. And finally, if it's less than 80, we want to return poor. And that's pretty much it. No need for four closing parentheses here. Just one solitary closing parenthesis, and we're ready to lock our formula down. So now filling this down, we get the same results as four nested if functions with a vastly more straightforward formula. But as powerful and easy to use as the ifs function is, there is one caveat I want to call out here. So when using the ifs function, it's absolutely crucial to be strategic about the order in which you list your logical conditions. That's because ifs evaluates these logical conditions sequentially from left to right and will return the value for the very first condition that's true. Now that means that more specific or restrictive conditions should generally be placed first before broader conditions to ensure that they're correctly evaluated and prevent those more specific conditions from being overridden by broader conditions. So to make this concept a little bit more concrete, let's consider what would have happened had I put my B2 greater than or equal to 80 condition, the one that maps to a below average rating, first. Well, because greater than or equal to 80 is just naturally a broader and less restrictive criteria than say greater than or equal to 95, what would happen is all the employees who would otherwise be assigned a rating of excellent or good would now be assigned a rating of average because any number that's greater than or equal to 95 is also greater than or equal to 80 and the same is true of any number greater than or equal to 90 or 85. The bottom line is you'll just want to be careful and intentional in how you order these pairs of logical conditions and their corresponding return values. And generally speaking, that order will be from the more specific conditions first to the less specific, more general conditions later. Okay, now before we go, I want to help guide you around another pitfall that sometimes trips up new users of the FS function. And that is input values that don't match any of our logical conditions. Now in our specific case, we've actually got all of our bases covered. Pretty much every number on the spectrum is handled in some form or fashion by our logic. From numbers greater than or equal to 95 to anything that's less than 80 and everything in between but that might not always be the case. You might not have always accounted for every possible range of values that might potentially be fed into your ifs function. And in that case, what you need is a way to generate a fallback or default value that the formula returns if none of our criteria are met. And to show you what that looks like, I'll simply change the last logical condition of our formula 
from B2 is less than 80 to the logical value true. So by making this last logical condition true, we guarantee that even if none of the other prior conditions are true, this one always will be. I mean, it's right in the name. So whatever return value is associated with true will effectively be the default value of our formula. So here, if a score isn't greater than or equal to 95, or greater than or equal to 90, or greater than or equal to 85 or 80, our formula will return the text string poor no matter what's in cell B2, because that last logical condition is guaranteed to be true. So let's lock this in and then fill down. And now we get the same results, but with a 100% guaranteed default value. All right, folks, that's a wrap for this one. Thanks for watching. Seriously, I really do appreciate it. And I'll be adding even more content to my channel very soon. See you next time.